Hi boys and girls. So today is our first online class class with you. So I wanted to post a video and do our, my lesson this way with you. Um, did you know that April is National Poetry Month? So this is the month that we should be writing our poetry. So I was going to share some poetry with you today. Um, you're going to notice that this is where the sidewalk ends. <laughs> and if you notice my book, it's been very well loved. Um, it's, it's, it is falling apart. Um, but I've had this book for, for many, many, many years. Um, I, I'm going to start with my favorite book, my favorite poem that I one time, a long time ago, taught a bunch of kindergartners. Um, it's called Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too, and I'll show you the illustration really quickly. I'm sorry, this is going to be reversed, and I don't, can't get my iPad to turn it around, and I'm trying to post onto class dojo and this is the only way I can figure out how to do it. So here is our Ickle Me Pickle Me Tickle Me Too poem. Ickle Me Pickle Me Tickle Me Too went for a ride in a flying shoe. Hooray what fun as time we flew said Ickle Me Pickle Me Tickle Me Too. Ickle was captain and Pickle was crew and Tickle served coffee and mulligan stew. As higher and higher and higher they flew Ickle Me Pickle Me Tickle Me Too. Ickle Me Pickle Me Tickle Me Too over the sun and beyond the blue. Hold on stay in I hope we do cried Ickle Me Pickle Me Tickle Me Too. Ickle Me Pickle Me Tickle Me Too never returned to the world they knew. And nobody knows what happened to dear Ickle Me Pickle Me Tickle Me Too. That's a fun poem to read. And a lot of times we overlook poetry because we think, oh, it's, it's boring and all that. The interesting thing about poetry is that you don't have long sentences. It's not like writing a paragraph. You're pulling out important, key, fun words. Like here we had a rhyme pattern, but there were a lot of things over the sun and beyond the blue. We were imagining somebody flying far away. So it is, it is um, tickle served key, tea, or coffee, tickle served coffee and mulligan stew. So you could imagine um, somebody giving you a cup of coffee or a bowl of, of sheep stew. I think that's mutton. I'm not so sure what mulligan is. Here's another one in my very beat up badly book. Um, I had it. Oh, I really do. Once I get back to school, I'm going to have to fix this one. This one I like, and you're going to look at it, and it's going to be backwards, but it's called Lazy Jane. Lazy, 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 lazy Jane. She wants a drink of water, so she waits and waits and waits and waits and waits and waits for it to rain pretty funny right that's our shell Silverstein um, and I like this one this one is the 4th of July well I shouldn't have said that let me take that back you didn't hear me say that the 4th oh crash my bash it's bang the zang 4th whoosh baroom July woo let me read it again oh crash my bash it's bang the zang Fourth whoosh of broom. Woo. July woo. <laughs> oh, boys and girls. Someday things go better than others. Anyway, so you get an idea. Um, the interesting thing about this poem that is crash, bang, um, zang, whoosh. Does anybody remember what that's called when we use words like that? Um, when we use words like quack or... Um, Boy, now Mrs. Nielsen, honk. Those kind of words. Does anybody remember what that's called? That's called, I don't know, it's written backwards. Onomatopoeia, where we have those sound words. Here's a book that for many years I used. It actually was like for my kids. It's called Trains. It's a real simple little book. It's called by Chris DeMarest. Train chugs, clickety clack. That's a sound word. That's that's onomatopoeia. In you know up front, caboose and back. Pass farms, cows moo. What is moo, everybody? Onomatopoeia. If you said onomatopoeia, you are correct. Over hills, choo choo. Think about that. That choo choo sound that you hear. That's the train. And when I read the word choo. That's how it sounds, so that's what we call onomatopoeia. Cross bridge, river flows, through tunnel, 
light glows. Bells clang, clang, clang. What do we call that, everybody? We call that onomatopoeia. Whistle blasts. Station nears home at last. It's a very cute little picture book, um, but it has onomatopoeia in it. It has rhyme in it. It's got a lot of interesting um, sounds and sights for us. So I thought we would do some tour poetry. Um, and I started doing this many years ago because I saw this little poem in one of my poetry books. It's very, very old. And it was just, birds fly above us, white bellies like hands in water. I was really impressed with that. And I was like, wow, I can see the bubs flying and you know how they kind of look like hands, the wings. And then I had another book that came after that one, and it had this two-word poem. And it, it kind of gave us an idea like of a story. I'm sorry, I keep looking at the wrong thing. This iPad is confusing me. So somebody was telling a story, and they said, you know, I kind of wandered off by myself and was walking along the ocean's edge. All of a sudden, I spotted something that was glistening in the sand ahead of me. I ran up ahead and saw that it was a tip of a seashell. I started digging like crazy, and when I was done, I couldn't believe my eyes. I had dug up a seashell about the size of a football. It's still on my bookcase at home. So they wrote this wonderful little paragraph about going to a beach in, when they were in Hawaii and going to a beach and uncovering this beautiful seashell. And then they took that paragraph and they made it into a two-word poem. Now I'm going to read you the two-word poem and see if you think it sounds kind of like that paragraph. Buried treasure, beautiful beach, deserted cove, looking seashells, wandered off, spotted glistening, digging crazy, football size, on bookcase. So you kind of got an idea of his poem of that story that he shared with you. So I thought it would be fun to write some two-word poems with you today. And remember, words are important. The words that we use um, can't be boring words. These are going to be fun words. They're going to be sound words. Does poetry have to rhyme? I'm hoping I'm hearing everybody saying, no, poetry doesn't have to rhyme. Shel Silverstein does a great job rhyming. He's a kind of crazy guy. Um, Chris DeMarcus did rhyme. Do you have to do rhyme? Absolutely not. We can be like the seashell and do what we want. Now, how are we going to write a two-word poem? Well, I have a great graphic organizer for you. You ready? But, um, so we have this great um, organizer to help us collect details. So I can show you this. Okay. Ah, why don't I get rid of my, here, I'll use that, not the overhead. Um, this great, so we're going to put our subject here in the middle. And then all the way around, we're going to list some things that come to our mind when we think about that subject. And then we can go back in and add color words or sound words if we want. So I'm going to do my first one, spring. And I'm going to pretend like it's not snowing outside. <laughs> and when I think about spring, I think about flowers. I think about the grass. I think about birds. What else can I think about? What else do you think about when you hear... Oh, my windows, I, I open those windows. I like to open the window. The other day, it was so nice. I was running around putting screens. I open my windows. What other things? I got two more spaces if I want to fill something in. Maybe I'll do that in just a few minutes. But what can I say about flowers? Um, I can even get more specific rather than just saying flowers. You know what's coming up right now are tulips. So I can put tulips. Whoops. Let me get a darker pen for you. I forgot that you can't see what I'm doing. So rather than saying flowers, maybe I'll say tulips blooming. Ah, well, I 
like that? I like that. Grass. I think I might use a color word for here um, because I notice how nice and green. So we have green grass. I wrote birds. Hmm. Now, can I make that more specific? Can I choose a spe special bird that you see? What Are there any um, special birds that you notice now that you didn't see before? I don't know if you noticed, but the robins are back. And robins come out in spring, so robins. Or I could write hummingbirds because the hummingbirds are coming. So robins. So what do robins do? What could I have them doing? Can, I've, got, I've got some color words and some other sight ones. Can I think of? Of maybe a sound word that I could do there. Birds. What do you think? What well, sounds? Birds whistle. Birds chirp. Birds squeak. Birds squawk. Squawk is a hard word though. So I like chirp. Let's do Bert Robin's chirp. Windows. Oh, I'm going to just open my windows because man, I love those windows being open. I ain't window opening my windows today though, that's for sure. Um. Now, I could think of two more things there. Let me think. I'm sure you are probably shouting things right at me right now, and I wish that I could hear you. So, but I can start my poem. So I'm going to call this poem Spring. And I'm going to write tulips blooming. Oops, Mrs. Nielsen has to write correctly. Tulips blooming. You can pretend I'm writing it down correctly. I'm just spelling things. Green grass. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put green grass swaying, like swaying gently like in the breeze. I know that just came to me. Swaying gently. Um, robins chirp. Open windows. I got my ending. Ready? Warm breeze. What do you think of that? So let me read it to you. My poem is entitled Spring by Mrs. Nielsen. Tulips bloom, green grass, swaying gently, robins chirp, open windows, warm breeze spring days or something I could do like that so the the whole idea is to create this beautiful visual picture and the beauty of it is that you don't use many words you only use two words but you really try to use specific words so like I said instead of saying flowers I picked a flower instead of just saying birds I picked a type of birds and I thought about our five senses can you remember our five senses it's C hear, smell, taste, touch. So if you can incorporate any of those things into your describing circle here. So <laughs> you could do snow today if you wanted. And we could do snowballs. Uh, snow spring, you could do like a, snow, a, a snowy day in spring. Um, so you could do that too. But think about using onomatopoeia. Those are those sound words. And um, go ahead and fill in your describing circles. And then once you get done, you can go ahead and put that in there. And if you'd like to share it with me, I would love to read some of your poems. If I'm posting this on your class dojo or in your class classroom, you can put it on your classroom for me. You can share it. Or you can go ahead and, and share it, take a picture up, write it, and take a picture of it and send it to me. Um, I would love to hear some of your poetry. And maybe if we ever get back to school, we could write a whole book. We could put them all in there and publish our own little book of two-word poetry. Okay? So enjoy today. Enjoy. Well, don't enjoy today. The snow is out there. No, people enjoy snow too. Um, so enjoy your day. Try out this two-word poetry. Read some poetry, boys and girls. I was going out and finding all my poem books last night, and I realized that so many of them are at school. But you guys enjoy poetry and enjoy your day. And you know, the fun thing to do, too, is try to memorize some poetry. Like, my Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too went for a riding a flying shoe. Hooray, what fun. It's time we flew, said Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too. 
tickle me too. <laughs> and I, I used to know that poem all the way through. I have to admit, I don't anymore. So exercise your brain, exercise your handwriting, your, your, your pencil writing, your tip typing memory, and write a two word poem if you can. Try that out today. And I will see you later. Oh, I'm gonna read a really good book. Dr. Seuss's Hooray for Diffendor for Day. So if you're looking at the school story, I'll be posting this next. And and hopefully I won't get too tongue-tied. But I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a hard one. I'll see you all later. Um, and shoot me a text. You can view this either in Google Classroom or in your uh, Class Dojo story. Okay? I see you all later. Bye.